This is how to color grade inside of DaVinci Resolve using Dehancer Pro. Dehancer Pro is a film emulation plugin that I love, and I'm gonna be taking you along with me, showing you all my project settings, building node trees together, sharing helpful tips, and then we'll dive in and I'll actually share my personal workflow with you so that you can take Dehancer and use it inside of DaVinci Resolve. All the footage we're grading today, I'm actually gonna make a Google Drive link, and that's gonna be in the description. So you'll be able to download that to your computer and you'll actually be able to color grade along with me as we go step by step. If you'd like to purchase any Dehancer products, if you type in the code Austin Smith at checkout, you'll get 10% off your purchase. We're going to be taking a look at three short films and how I've used Dehancer Pro to grade them. Before I demonstrate how I use the nodes and how I've built the node trees and the workflow, we're actually going to take a look and watch each short film before I show you how I graded each one. So then you'll be able to see exactly how it looks and how I built the look. Let's take a dive in. The first thing we're going to do is if you're on a Mac, uh, we're going to turn off True Tone Display if it's on, so that way we can accurately judge the colors. And to do that, you want to click up here on the Control Center, go to your display, click that button, and we're going to turn the True Tone off. Once you have Dehancer Pro downloaded, the first thing we're going to do is go into our project settings under Color Management. The color science we're using today is DaVinci YRGB. The reason why we're grading a DaVinci YRGB is because because we're going to be using color space transforms in a node based node tree structure. Timeline color space is DaVinci Wide Gim Intermediate. Our output color space is Rec 709A. So we're going to be grading in the biggest color space possible, which is DaVinci Wide Gim Intermediate. And then we're going to be outputting to Rec 709A. I covered this in a different video on what color space transforms are and kind of how I have my project settings set up. So I'll link it on the screen here so you can go check that out. I have this changed. It's set as trilinear when you first have this pulled up. Um, I set it to tetrahedral and then broadcast safe IRE levels. I have it set to 0 to 100 and then make broadcast safe. Another important thing to do is go into general options and we're actually going to turn this use S curve for contrast. We're going to check that off and then hit save. Uh, a couple more important options to click if you're using a Mac is we're going to go up to DaVinci Resolve on under Preferences. We're going to click on General and you want to make for sure you have Use Mac Display Color Profiles for Viewers and automatically tag Rec. 709 Scene Clips as Rec. 709A. This solves the gamma shift issue that you may have heard about with YouTube in QuickTime. So whenever you export Div from DaVinci and you notice that the colors and the brightness is shifted just a little bit, this is why. So if you click those two options, that's going to solve your problem for you. Now that we have our project settings set up, we're going to go in and build our node tree. And we're going to use the same node tree for all three short films. Um, if you click option S, it makes a node. We're going to make six nodes here. And we're going to put color space transform at the first node and a color space transform on the last node. We're grading a DaVinci wide gamut. So our first node, we're using a color space transform. That's going to be getting us from our camera's color space into DaVinci wide gamut. We can then grade with the biggest color space possible. That's what DaVinci wide gamut is. Then the last color space transform is going to be taking it from DaVinci wide gamut to Rec. 709A. A color space transform is transform Forming the image from what the camera saw to what our viewer can show. That's basically what a color space transform is. I'm using a black magic camera, so I'm gonna be using black magic for the input color space. If you have a Sony camera, a Canon camera, you wanna check on the camera and it'll actually tell you what color space it's using. Black magic design Y gamage in four and five. Input gamma is gonna be black magic design film gen five. Output color space is going to be DaVinci wide gamma. It. Output gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. So that's our first one set up, and I'm actually going to name this to DaVinci Wide Gamut so I can look and I know exactly where it's going and what it's doing. The next one, we're going to take it from our big color space that we're grading in, DaVinci Wide Gamut, and then we're going to be outputting it to Rec. 709. Gamma 2.4. We're going to be adding Dehancer Pro. If you click this number right here, it'll disable the node. We're going to get to that here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and label this. Label our CST to Rec. 709. We're going to set up some other nodes here. Separation. This one's going to be for saturation. This one's going to be for hue. One thing I'm going to do is actually add one more node here. And this will, you'll only be able to access this in the studio version of uh, DaVinci Resolve. We're going to take a DC 
DCTL here. And this is a DCTL that I got from Colin Kelly. So if you wanna visit his YouTube channel, he'll have in the description a folder or a link you could download his freebies from. He has a DCTL and let me show you what we're gonna do with it. We select this exposure chart, version 1.3. Take our total steps down to one. Click off show ramp and since we're gridding a DaVinci Intermediate, we're clicking this option right here. And all that we're doing right here is we're finding the middle gray point. Click on separation. We're gonna click on this box right here. And that's gonna set a point right here and that shows us where middle gray is. Whenever I go to adjust separation, like that's gonna be for split toning, that'll help me make for sure that I'm not swaying like skin colors like blue or green or, or too warm. And I, I dive into that a little bit more on my other video. So I'm actually gonna link that up there for you to check out. The most important thing that I've learned with Dehancer Pro, and if you if you get this right, using Dehancer Pro as a breeze, you need to white balance your footage. If you take anything away from this video, white balancing your footage, balancing the colors, the temperature, you're gonna enjoy Dehancer Pro so much more, and you're gonna be able to utilize its full potential. So let's take a look at this short film I made called The Doc, and then after we watch it, I'm gonna be showing you how I graded it using Dehancer. We're gonna go on here. I'm using Blackmagic Raw so I can go in and adjust the color, tint, and exposure. So I'm gonna go ahead and balance this image right here. Our color temp here, 5300. Our tint, be minus 10. And our exposure, bring it down some. We're gonna go ahead and enable Dehancer right here. And you'll notice we gotta change some settings to kinda get a usable image here. So the first thing we wanna do is where it says source. We're gonna change that to DVR, so DaVinci Resolve Wide Gamut slash Rec 709. We're gonna go down here to our film grain, go into the positive size grain, 1.91, 11. And then what I do, sometimes Dehancer's grain can be a little much, so you can actually go in here even after you've decreased the size and the amount, and you can go in here to shadows and bring it down, highlights and bring it down, and then our mid-tones and bring it down. The next thing we're gonna do is change profile from linear to Kodak 2383 print film. Printing, or like medium printing, is the, like the last stage in the analog process of film developing, like a film system. Now we're at this right here, and the film profile we're gonna be using for this one is Kodak Gold 200. This right here is a push-pull slider in the analog film process you can develop film for longer or shorter depending on whether your image is overexposed or underexposed and so this kind of acts as almost like a creative tool so i can kind of get it to more how i like it we're going to go down to print 
I find it helpful to go ahead and add the contrast you're gonna be using because everything else is gonna be happening kind of with that final image. We're gonna go in here to tonal contrast and then Dehancer recommends you as soon as you choose technically a film stock, they want you to come up to the expand and adjust your black points and white points. Once we've added our contrast, we're gonna go adjust our white and black point. Once we've added our total contrast, we're gonna click analog range limiter and that just gives us more space to be able to push around our contrast. So we can actually add even more contrast. And then we're gonna go up to expand. Kind of the workflow with that is you wanna add contrast and then go to your expand. Add contrast and go to your expand. So you wanna add the amount of contrast that you wanna see in your image and then adjust your white and black point. As a general kind of rule, I like keeping my highlights at 896. I feel like going any, any brighter than that is just not really my thing. So here I have it where it's actually not touching the bottom right here. Cause I don't want to like bottom out any of my stuff. Now that we've decided our film stock, now that we've printed it to 2383, now that we've done our contrast and white and black point, here we've kind of done 80% of the look. After this is going to be just adjusting kind of based on our creative taste. But we'll go in here and do our film compression. And film compression is essentially redistributing your highlights. So you're enabling it. And then if you adjust the tonal range, this is gonna be redistributing your highlights and it's gonna make it look more analog. It's not gonna let your highlights kind of really blow out. I can adjust my tonal range and then adjust my white point. And you'll see what that dad did here. This is where my highlights were and tonal range as I'm increasing it is giving me more of the detail in the sky. So as I'm making changes, I'm constantly going back to expand. I want to increase the white point right there. Perfect. Next is the film developer tool. This tool lets you create your own basically film development process. Here we can increase contrast boost. One thing about actual motion picture analog film is there's actually a ton of contrast. So we're definitely gonna lead into the contrast. And if you've ever used uh, contrast and pivot, contrast boost and, and gamma correction is kind of like a contrast and pivot. So you add your contrast and then you can use your gamma correction to kind of brighten it up. So you're adding contrast and then brightening it up, adding some more color. We're gonna go into our color head and this is based on the film making process of adding color. I'm gonna take preserve exposure all the way down. I'm gonna enable it. And to kind of get an orange and teal sort of look, what we can do is give it some cyan and then we're gonna go in shadows tone. So going to the left is gonna be cooler. Going to the right is gonna be warmer. So this is affecting just my shadows tone. Midtone, I'm gonna warm up my midtone. I'm gonna add them some magenta, some yellow. If you make something and it's you like it, but it's just too strong, then you can go into your impact and it basically acts like an opacity slider. I've already touched on film grain. We're gonna close these down. Halation and bloom are characteristics you get from motion picture film. Halation is basically you get like a red tint around high contrast areas. So we can zoom in. Enabling and disabling it, you can kind of see what it does to the edge right here, or adding some red. And then bloom. Something that I do that may seem kind of counterproductive because I'm shooting 6K resolution on this Blackmagic 6K G2. I'm actually gonna go on and decrease the film resolution way down. And that will give the image a very just smooth, buttery, just like it, it, it takes away the sharpness, but yeah, there's still contrast and detail there. And then I go down to film breath. We're gonna turn that on and gate weave and turn that on. Film breath has to do with imperfections in the, the film development process where certain frames are a little bit brighter or a little bit different skewed contrast wise from the other frames. And then gate weave is gonna be, since like using real film, we're emulating that film going through a, a photo window. It can kind of be crooked, so it emulates that a little bit. It does kind of zoom in on your footage. Now that we finished that one, we're gonna dive into our next short film. This one's called The Barn.
in trouble. Yeah, look at the fast. Okay. Good boy. See? Hey, just get your feet. And you may have noticed my iPad here. I'm using it as a reference monitor. To do that, you're gonna go up to Workspace, Video Clean Feed, and you wanna choose Sidecar Display, in parentheses, AirPlay, and let let you use your iPad as a reference monitor, which is pretty cool. So as a starting point for this one, we're gonna make it easier on ourselves. We're gonna highlight this, Command C, click this one right here, Command V. We're going to click our dehancer right here. We're gonna reset node grade. We're gonna turn it on. And you'll notice right here, my image isn't quite balanced. So again, you wanna make for sure the image is balanced so that we can have a better, more successful time inside of dehancer pro. So we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna color balance it real quick. For this image right here, we're gonna be using a different film stock, but we're still gonna be printing it to Kodak 2383. The film we're gonna choose, we're actually gonna to go to Kodak Vision 350D. We're gonna come down here to print, change it from linear to 2383 print film. We're gonna come down to film grain. We're gonna use the same settings, pulling down size and amount, and then to, to lessen the grain, we're gonna pull the shadows and the highlights down, the midtones down too, just like that. We're gonna change the film type to positive. Back to our print film, we're going to add contrast, and then we can go to our expand, because now that we've adjusted contrast, we could go back and clean up our black points and white points. And you'll notice it's obviously very blue. So this is where our push and pull can really come in handy. We're gonna take this and pull it. So now we're gonna get more of a, a warm tone right here. Another trick I'm gonna do is uh, saturation. We're gonna click our saturation here, right click, go down to color space, put it into HSV color space, change the channel, click off channel one, click off channel three. It's in an HSV color space and we've disabled channel one and three. So basically in a nutshell, all we're doing is affecting saturation. And we're gonna be able to use this gain knob as a saturation. We're gonna push up lots of saturation. So one thing that I noticed about Dehancer Pro is I feel like I'm I struggle on getting enough saturation into the images, so I have a separate node just for saturation. And then in this one, we're gonna take our, our separation, because what I've noticed in here is there's no sort of color contrast. It just kind of feels like it's warm and red and there's kind of like nothing to contrast that with. So we're gonna go into our separation node that we have set up. We're gonna click green here. And if you hold option, it's gonna magnetize it to the line. We're gonna add in some green to the shadows, some blue. There you go. So now we got something going on in the in the shadows. So this is before 
and after. All we've done, we just added some separation. And we're gonna go back to Dehancer, and I'm gonna click Print. A helpful slider right here. Um, I notice our image is still just a little cool, so I'm gonna go in this target white, and we're gonna warm it up by pulling it left. Uh, the target white is not for big changes in color temperature, it's gonna be for changes in color temperature between I think it's 5500 and 6500, so we have that there. And if we wanted to, we could add in some color density. We could push in more contrast, so for that, we're gonna hit our analog range limiter. Basically opens the image up, so now we can go in and add even more, even more contrast. And again, just like the last image, like we have like where the image is right now, we're basically 80% there. So anything from beyond this is just creative to taste. We're gonna go into our color head, do the same thing as the last image. We're gonna take our preserve exposure and go all the way down. We're gonna enable this. These controls are, are really sensitive too. So I mean, any more than just like a, a point and a half or two points either direction, you're really pushing around the colors in your image. And then I'm actually gonna go back to saturation here and yeah just really cranking that saturation now that i've made a few changes i can go back to expand kind of readjust and that, that's again that's the name of the game with dehancer pro is you're constantly going back to your expand and you're changing your white point and your black point point. and now we can go to our film compression enable that and bring back some of the detail in the highlights go to expand kind of bring the white point back up and then we're just going to add some halation and then some blue turn on our film breath and gate weave and then i'm going to go to film grain i'm actually going to turn my film resolution all, all the way down i'm noticing I, I could probably go deeper with the black so i'm not actually going to go back to my black point then my white point there you go that's that image um, again we use the kodak vision 350d for that one with that being said let's roll into the last short film this one's called the city Just like the last one, we're gonna go over to here. We're gonna copy and paste our node tree over here. And this image is actually looking pretty good already. Um, we do need to adjust our color temperature because like I said, you want to do that before you jump in. Dehancer does recommend in their blog to go in and before you even like open Dehancer, essentially adjusting the color balance. So I'm gonna go ahead and correct this one a little bit right here. We're gonna turn our Dehancer on. And this one, we kind of already have Dehancer set up right here. So let's go through and change our profile to um, another one that I like to use. I've started to like using is this Kodak Aero Color for 125. We're gonna click on that one and then we're gonna adjust our push pull. This one's very contrasty. Let's see what happens if I pull at the black point. We're gonna go to analog ring. We're gonna go to the print, pull down this contrast, because this contrast is boom. And then to our expand white point. Let's add in some more saturation right here. I'm gonna go really heavy with that. Back into Dehancer. Let's raise the black point. Let's go to our film developer tool right here. And we're gonna add some little bit of contrast and then we're gonna go into color boost. There we go, that's what I was looking for. 
And you'll see what I did there is once you have your images set up like they're balanced and you have like a good good look like we, we've been making, you can actually copy and paste and then you could just switch out film stocks. And that'll be like my workflow going. You don't have to build like a brand new look every time. Like say, obviously if you're working on one short film, you make, you design the look for, you know, the entirety of the short film, but I mean, like I like making one look and then you can just like copy and paste and then you can adjust. Copy a grade over and then like, hey, I wanna change the film stock. Or hey, I wanna change this. So I wanna thank you guys so much for coming along with me. I know this was a longer video, so thank you for sticking around. Hopefully you've learned something. Again, make for sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, comment any questions that you have. Um, I'm gonna be dropping more and more things like this, more tutorials, more pragmatic approaches to where I'm not just telling you what stuff does, but I'm gonna be taking along with me to try stuff out. And again, um, if you like Dehancer, if you wanna use one of their products to purchase from their website, uh, make for sure to use the code AustinSmith at checkout. That gets you 10% off. I will see you guys in the next one.